Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting in Stewart, Florida. Today we're going to be showing you some of the best methods to install a DC-DC charger from a truck to a fifth wheel trailer. Today we're going to talk mainly about the methods of running your cable from the truck bed to the trailer and the best ways, the different ways that we've done that, what we like best. But we're going to start at the front of the truck and work our way back. So in the engine bay here, we can see that we've tapped off of the starter battery and used an Aegis breaker mounted with Velcro to the battery. We cover over those terminals so nothing shorts. And then we cover the wire with loom <clears throat> as we run it through the engine bay and underneath the vehicle. So that positive wire makes its way down through the engine bay, avoiding any moving parts, and then makes its way back along the frame of the vehicle secured with cable clamps, which is a stainless steel clamp with a rubber coating. The entire way it's coated with loom and we generally try to take the same path that the manufacturer has taken with a lot of their wiring. If that's not possible, we just make sure to avoid any hot items like the exhaust pipe. Wire makes its way over the wheel well and then up into the bed of the truck back here. So we can see the flush mount Anderson connector. So we basically cut a hole in the truck with an air saw, mount that flush mount connector, um, and have our slack of our wires secured. So getting to the fun part is how we secure the wires between the truck and the trailer. So in many applications, it is possible and preferred to have the wire go from this front bay through the skin of the RV and drop down here. And along with the seven pin, it would be about the same length and plug into that flush mount connector on the side of the bed. Now, what we found to be maybe preferred for a lot of RV owners is a jumper cable. Number one, why this is preferred is this space here is extremely tight. Some models of RVs, it is not possible to fish a large cable through here. Now, maybe it's possible if you're fishing a six gauge wire through for an Orion XS, a 50 amp charger, maybe no big deal. But if you are fishing a one odd wire through for a 1700 watt Sterling charger, which is what we're using here, it's just probably not going to fit. There's not space here because there's framing um, in the RV. So we found that a jumper wire will work better for those scenarios because number one, you're not getting that wire all marred up going in the skin. And number two, you can see the wire, you have eyes on it, you know if it's in good condition or if it needs replacing, if there's a break in the wire, if something's come loose or shorted, uh, this is preferred for a lot of people. So the next question we then get is, if the wire is not inside of the skin of the RV and it's exposed, how do we secure it so it's not just flopping and hanging over our tailgate of our truck? And in this case, we screwed cable clamps into the RV's frame and then we used this amazing little tool from Home Depot called the gear tie. So in this case, our RV owner no longer has to get out a tool to secure something to their RV when they're getting ready for transit. It's just, you know, basically a twist tie. Um, but it's, it's really heavy duty. It's never gonna come loose on you on the road and it looks nice and professional and secured. So another option, if this just isn't your style, you don't love the look, you can use a cable cover from Home Depot and that's just going to, much like you'd see in a house, cover over the wires. You can screw or glue that cable cover into the RV's frame as well. And so that would hold the cable in place. All right, so let's open it up and show you how we get from here to the DC-DC charger. So you can see we've just come down the side here um, and we're going to secure these wires a bit more before we turn over the vehicle to the customer. But the wires connect to a small bus bar and then we jump down to a two gauge because that's the largest that we can fit 
in the terminals of the Sterling DC-DC charger. So we use one aught for the length of the run just to avoid having a large voltage drop. And that helps us because any voltage dropped over the cable is essentially power lost. So the, the less voltage drop, the better, hence the larger cable. Right now we're using a one aught. The largest size that would work is a two gauge, but you'd lose a lot of voltage, you know, a lot of power across that cable. So a one aught works well. We might even step up to a two aught in the future. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then from there, this is charging a 24 volt battery. So we don't need nearly as large wires on the output. So again, this is the Sterling BB1224-120. You can find these on our website and we, we may even have open box units available at a discount for the budget hunters. But just know this is a 1700 watt charger. So this is triple the output of a Victron Orion XS. So this is why we prefer these when you're powering a big trailer like a fifth wheel. We don't want you to drive eight hours to your destina destination and still have your battery only 25%. So this is charging faster than an air conditioner is using power. If you need help getting the right parts or getting an installation of a DC-DC charger on your fifth wheel, please reach out.